Hello. Some would call me Tim, but they'd be wrong because that'd be a Monty Python reference. My name is Crash, sometimes called Aaron, and tonight I will be DMing a short little adventure where I do horrible things to people and they get mad at me for it. Um, these people include such diverse elements as Logan. Logan, who will you be playing tonight? I am Fenix Shamash Bax Norcruz. Generalis the second, a dragonborn paladin. Okay, I cannot clap and hit my push to talk button at the same time, but let it be known that I was clapping w with the push to talk button not pressed. I am impressed, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so for those of you who uh, listened to this after the fact, um, I did let Logan know his character's full name after the adventure last week. So... The party doesn't know this name, but the player who plays the character knows. And that's worth something. Uh, we also have um, Matt. Matt, who are you playing tonight? I am playing Aristobulus Ravenscroft, human wizard. And last but certainly not least, we have Jen. Jen, who will you be playing tonight? I am playing Meepo Chipped Claw, a cobalt sorcerer. Okay, and... Jen, like me, has a website. Jen, where can we find you? Uh, you can find almost everything I do at Book of Jen, which is bookofjen.net. It's got a bunch of blogs and a podcast and another one coming up. Fantastic. And I'm not giving my web address because if you're listening to this, you probably already know it. All right. So let's start off the scene. Um, last week, your party took... What is essentially a train, although um, the person who created it had a... Uh, whose name was Ed, for short. And my cat is making all kinds of racket in the background, but Mike is probably picking it up. Um, a, a gnome named Ed created a train, and you used that to get to a coastal mining town called Oregano. Um... O R E apostrophe G A N O. So, you are a horrible person. <laughs> I am. This, this has been established. Also, I'm not the one who came up with that name. I, I will reveal more information um, about that at a later time. Uh, but uh, this particular town, uh, there, there was one of those little um, kiosk things on the train on your way there. That had little brochures for uh, visit scenic and insert name of town here. So you picked up one of the ones for Oregano, and it, it you skipped over most of it because it was all like tourist trappy stuff. Although the mini golf course sounded kind of nice. Um, <laughs> it's, it's thematic. There, there was a pretty cool looking windmill, uh, which is really weird for a mining town that is entirely underground. Um, apparently the town started off above ground, but as they continued to mine the rock salt, it started to be further and further away from where they built their settlement, and it just sort of saved time to have it be underground. Um, so that's the main deal about it. Um, the dwarves are okay with it because there was a representative for the dwarves that happened to be on site. Um... So you arrive, and um, Ed lets you know that it's probably going to be a few days before he's taking off again because it takes some time to unload all of the goods that he brought to Oregano, and then to load up all of the mined rock salt that he then takes back to Idaho and sells to traveling merchants uh, for a hefty profit, I, he might add. Um, He's quite proud of this. But it takes a few days. No maintenance on the train and stuff. So if you want to leave your stuff on the train, you can. If you want to get a room at the inn, you can. Um, but as he's telling you this, you notice that there is a procession um, of dark-clad townsfolk um, going past the train and off into uh, an area of this cave system that you're in. Um, away from where you can see the houses. There's houses over on one side, and there's an area that is not houses on the other side. They're heading towards the area that is vacant of domiciles. 
Sounds like something to look upon. Okay. Let us follow the crowd, as it were. Okay. Um, you do so. Uh, as you get closer, um, it, they do have light sources with them. Um, you're, you're not in pitch blackness. Um, they're, they're, so, several of them are carrying lanterns. Um, they do appear to be also carrying a coffin. Um, from the size of the co- coffin, you are assuming that it, it is not a human in it. Um, maybe a child, but if it's a child, they're a rather wide child, so you're guessing it's probably a dwarf um, inside the coffin. Um, they are all acting very somber. There's no one wailing and crying horrendously, as you might see in a very theatrical funeral. Um, in this case, they're, they're all being just very quiet. Um, you don't see a minister um, or, or a cleric or anyone that, that you would... If, if there is one, they're not wearing something that identifies them visually as someone who fits that role. Um, but there is a one individual who has a metal badge that's pinned to the, the front of a vest that he's wearing. Um, I should also mention that um, everyone you see appears to be human. Um, if there's anyone that is elvish or half-elvish, it would be... You, you can't tell because uh, some of the hairstyles cover the tops of their ears. Um, there is... Most of the villages that you've visited have shown... Um, a heterogeneous group of ethnicities. So, like, Coombridge was mostly um, people who were Caucasian with either red or blonde hair for the most part, with very little uh, variation. Uh, This town appears to have uh, a more diverse group. Uh, Pretty much every skin tone that exists for humans is uh, represented here. Although the ones who are who would be considered white are very, very pale. Like they really spend their entire life in this cave as opposed to going out up to the surface at any point. They, they don't seem to be visitors to the surface world so much. Natives. Exactly. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I will move towards the man with the badge, as it were. Something pinned to his chest? Yes. All right. Uh, good day, sir. I am Aristobulus Ravenscroft. May I ask who has deceased? Oh, uh, pleased to meet you. Uh, my, my, my name is uh, 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 Deputy... I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Sheriff. Uh, uh, Sheriff Dante. Uh, pl- 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 pleasure to make your acquaintance. Um, that, that was... Um, that, that, that was... Uh, Sheriff, um, um, uh, uh, Craig, uh, C- Craig Bronzehammer, um, he, he, well, well he was the, the, the sheriff, I guess I, I, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, um, uh, uh what was your na- name again? Uh, uh, um, Ar- Aristabulus? Aristabulus. Oh, Stabulous. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm Stabulous sorry. Ravenscroft. It is all right. Call me Ari. It's much simpler. Ari. Ari. Yes. Uh, 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 pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Oh. Pleased to meet you. Um, uh, did the sheriff die of natural causes? Uh, getting your head crushed in is kind of natural. Uh, there was That's a cave in. Um, oh. So yes. an accident. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping so. Um, he, he, I don't know why he was in that particular cave. We we, we blocked it off uh, several years ago because of cave-ins. There's a, there was a lot of moisture in there, erosion, so um, the, the the salt walls weren't very stable. Um, but he he. He was investigating some other deaths that that weren't so natural, so I am not I'm not entirely sure. But it it, it, it could have been I, I don't know I don't know I don't it's it's my first day. 
I've heard that before somewhere. Uh, it's alright. Calm down. Um, clearly something is amiss here. Um, my companions and I are adventurers and we have certain skills and certain abilities that may perhaps be of some assistance to you in searching out what may have happened to your sheriff. That's, uh, that, uh, very kind of you, sir. But, um, with, with, with all due respect, um, and I just smacked my head against the microphone. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm method acting here and, and acting with my body and changing my posture as I'm talking <laughs> and, and moving so I'm, I'm in the way of my equipment. Um, with, with all, with all due respect, sir, it's, you you literally are, are brand new in town, and we're we're kind of a close knit community. Uh, there, the town folk here are prob probably not going to take too kindly of a bunch of strangers coming in and, and, and poking around. That may be, um, but we would be impartial in any investigation certainly some strangers have no uh, preconceived notions about what occurred and thus anything we find might be helpful yeah it is, i can I, I i i concede your point i do i do I, um but that's that's kind of just it um you don't you don't know the townsfolk sir um, so, you, you, your lack of preconceived notions might, might actually be a detriment, uh, not Fair a enough. benefit. Fair enough. Um, we're going to be in town a few days. Should you need any assistance, I am a wizard of sorts, uh, quite adept in certain magics, um, if you find you need magical assistance, please feel free to call upon me, and I will attempt to endeavor what aid you need. Okay. While you've been talking, they have reached the the grave that they've already dug for mm -hmm. the the ex sheriff, um, Craig Bronze Bottom, which I'm gonna have no bron Bronze Hammer. Bron bronze Hammer. I'm gonna have to write that down because I made that name up on the spot. <laughs> um, and his his name was Dante. <laughs> Um, Dente. Dente. Yes. Like, like uh, pasta. Yeah, Al. He is, yeah, his first name is Al. How did you Al. guess? Al, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought his name was going to be, be Pepper. Not every name in this adventure is going to be a pun. Um, that you know of. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so Craig Bronzehammer. Now, I will remember that name for later. So, I don't say a different name later and you're like, who? What was that? Okay. So, um... Okay. I, so, they, they lowered the casket into uh, th this hole that they've dug already, the grave that was already dug. Uh, there's already a tombstone in place. And um, they've just started shoveling... Um, what passes for dirt, which is actually kind of just loose rock pebbles and a significant amount of salt crystals. So there's pretty much salt crystal everywhere in here. Um, this cave was mined out at some point, but it, from the looks of it, quite some time ago. Um, but as they're doing that, um, who has the highest passive perception among you? What's your um. passive perception, everyone? Mm -hmm. Ours is a 14. I'm trying to find that. It'd be near the top of your character sheet. Okay. Under abilities? No. Skills? Um, it, it's the same row with your name on it. it goes for oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, 11. 11. 11. Okay. And, oh, Logan, yours is 10. Oh, or, or, is 10. Sorry. Okay. So, um... In the order that I asked you, that's the order that you start to notice um, a low rumbling sound 
that that's coming from the bottom up. And um, th this catches you, Ari, in mid-sentence um, as you were finishing up your discussion. And after you notice, um, Sheriff Dente notices too. And he's like, oh no, not again. And the ground falls out from underneath you. Oh, yeah. Oh. I need everyone to roll a, I'm going to say a dexterity check. Which dice is that? So you D20. roll a d20. 20, got it, and, okay. And whatever your dexterity modifier is. Okay. You add that so to it. I have rolled a six and... That's not going to pass because your modifier is not Modifier is one. <laughs> Yeah, that, that that makes it a seven. Uh, this yeah. is not going to save. Okay. All right. Ari has a sixteen total. <laughs> I rolled a two. Okay, so that's fantastic because that means um, the wizard is not going to take max damage. <laughs> <laughs> that's always a good thing. Yes. <laughs> Although the sorcerer still is. Yeah, that's bad. So. Um, so if I'm falling, would the umbrella hat reduce damage? Like, um, from ooh, slow fall. That's right. You you've got your slow fall hat. I forgot. I keep forgetting about the thing that I made for Meepo. Yeah. <laughs> it's a homebrew item. I literally had to craft its abilities, <laughs> and I keep forgetting I handed that out. Okay, so mm -hmm. so you want to activate your umbrella? Yes. Okay, so as you're fall as the ground gives out underneath you and rocks are coming in from above, rocks are literally falling. Hopefully, we won't have everyone die. Um, <laughs> you activate your umbrella, and that sort of slows your descent a little bit. So I I will interpret this as you making this save. You're still going to take some damage because there's rocks coming down above you. Also, okay, uh, moving slower doesn't stop them. Right, um, right. So, but she at least doesn't slam into the ground underneath. That, that's good thinking. Okay, so Fenix takes seven points of damage. And a few crack groups. And Ari takes five. And Meepo takes two. Okay. What was if someone rolled a natural point? Um, then they would have taken half damage. Yeah. All right, so... You fall a considerable distance. It's not a straight downfall. Um, you sort of hit a, an incline and you slide for a while on um, all this debris that's going with you. Whee! And yes. Um, <laughs> thank you. The DM has to stop and, and compose himself because he was not expecting a wee from that particular player. Uh, <laughs> Um, it eventually settles, and you are half buried in this stuff that you came down with you. Um, you know that you are in some kind of chamber because you're only half buried. Half of you is encountering air, but you can't see anything. So at this point, I would like everyone to roll a strength check. Um, it could be, if you've got, sorry, strength athletics. So, yeah, we're okay. not... uh, what dice is that? It, uh, anytime you're doing a check, it's going to be a d20. Okay, that, that I can do. Yes. And Ooh. if you have athletics, you add that. If you don't have athletics, you add your strength modifier. Okay. All those, all those years in the library, I really didn't develop athletics, so... But books are a... heavy, so you might have some strength. <laughs> <laughs> I have an 11. 20, 25. I, I rolled a 6 again. Somehow. And, okay. Um, and Ari got a 10. Athletics you, is... I have almost a 10 on, so... And, and Meepo has a negative strength modifier, so that's right. I think, so is it's, a 2 at this point. It's a... Yeah. Well, it's the... No, 4. It, modifier four. is a 2. A negative 2? Yeah, I was, think, I was going off of memory, but never mind about that. Okay, so Ari, you are... Buried up to the waist in loose salt crystals and rock. Uh, Meepo, you are also buried up to the waist. The, the same Can way, I dig except out? you're... 
Um, well, you're... Cobalt's it goes up. Tunnel. They do. It goes up to your waist. Oh. But your legs are free. Oh. You're 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 upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Head first. Um, okay. Uh, Logan, on the other hand, with his frickin' plus seven to athletics. <laughs> I'm sorry, not Logan. Fenix, who is played by Logan, with his frickin' plus seven to athletics, just sort of like bursts out of out of this rubble pile. Um kind of wishes he had Vex's Cloak of Billowing, because he'd be activating it right now, he can tell you. Um, and flexes just a little bit immediately afterwards. Um, <laughs> but you are in a, a completely dark room. You cannot see your hand in front of your face. Uh, you do, however, smell a very strong alcoholic odor. And you Take don't, and you don't have your cask anymore. That's bad. Wait, where are you in cask? Your cask that had the gear grinder special in it. No. Tragedy. Uh, that's like my favorite thing in the world. It was like a son to him. <laughs> Sorry, Mipo, you're a second favorite. <laughs> Oh, ouch! Shots wow. fired. Okay, that so, could be a problem. <laughs> so, so this is the scenario. Ari, you have freedom of movement from the waist up. Meepo, you you're half buried upside down. Phoenix, you don't know where they are because you can't see a thing. Technically, neither can Ari. Meepo would if if mm -hmm. her head was above. If she wasn't. Yeah. We're gonna. Yeah. We're gonna we're going to fix that. I'm going to use a light cantrip on my wand and my wand of smiles and let's <laughs> light things up a little bit here and see what the heck happened. Okay, so you light that up and you can see that um, you're all roughly grouped together. It's only the three of you that you see. Um, you don't know where anyone else that you saw on the surface. You don't You don't see the sheriff. You don't see Vex. You don't see Obame. Um... It's just the three of you. Um, you don't see Punk. Although, he's kind of short, so he might be further down. <laughs> um, Fenix, you can see clearly now. The wand has come. <laughs> um, You're going to special... <laughs> and, you see, and you see Meepo's legs just sort of moving back and forth in the... Uh... Little help, please? I hold on. I gotta find our gear grinder special. <laughs> you find oh. part of the keg. W one of the um, hoops that goes around the outer edge of it, and your guess is that it it burst open <coughs> on the way down, and it's completely it, it's not salvageable. You also really shouldn't use your breath weapon in, weapon in here is your best guess. Yeah. No. Fire pad. Well, you would make the cavern larger. <laughs> or very smaller. Yeah. We don't want to bring any more of this down upon our heads. Alright, I want to try to get them out. Okay. Who do you try to get out first? Hmm. Mitha. That is that is a good choice considering she isn't. Mipo does not breathe rock. Right. <laughs> okay. Slightly more dire constraints. <laughs> okay, so give me another athletics check. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, so the die roll plus seven. That's, that's... Wow, uh, <laughs> Phoenix, it's time to shine. 23. Yep, you you put one hand on each foot and just pull straight up, and you now are holding an upside-down Meepo uh, several feet off the ground with an umbrella hat filled with rock. Thank you for saving me. Well, now that you're my first favorite again. <laughs> You've been promoted. You're, you're moving up in the world. In this Yay. case, literally. After you move <laughs> down. 
Okay, give me another strength check for Ari. As as I'm trying to pull him out, I just say goodbye, Gear Grinder Special. Oh, natural 20. Yay. Okay, wonderful. You are all free of the rubble. And it's shifting a bit. And it's shifting a bit more. And it's shifting Uh-oh. it's shifting a bit more than we need to move. It, this is it not good. It should be from just creating some small cavities where people used to be. Um, now, let me describe this room a little bit. Oh my gosh, Akari is online and... Akari, are you participating or are you staying muted? It's up to you, I don't mind. Well, we, we can add you in if you wish. I am sober. Mostly. This, this is a plus. But I would say it's up to you more than me. I'm happy to join. My dice are here. Okay. Well, Yay. I just I just posted an image of the room. You are at the top end of it. Um, okay. Now, you'll notice that the color of the squares is blue. Uh, yes. That is because except for the area immediately around you that came in with that landslide that happened, um, most of this room is filled with I'm going to use the word water, but because this is a salt mine, it's really a a very, very thick brine. Um, You can't see through it. Okay. Lovely. Yes. Can we swim? You don't even know how deep it is. Um, your guess is it's not too deep because this room does have some stalactites and stalagmites. Some of them have fallen over or been damaged in various ways. You're assuming from cave-ins. Um, and with the curvature that you can see sticking up out of the water, um, your guess is that there's not that much under the water. Maybe half a foot, but you haven't exactly gone around and plumbed the depths at this point. We need um, to get out of here. So as, okay. as the as the silt continues to shift, you do notice a boot that looks familiar. Phoenix? Yeah. I think we have another po- companion that fell down with us. See if you can extricate him from the silt. Uh, all and right. You rolled a five? No, I said all right. Okay. Wait, is it plus athletics or strength? Athletics. That's what he said before. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, allowing athletics um, for this. If someone doesn't have athletics, it'd be strength. 25. Okay, you are now cradling in your arms one unconscious Vex. And and Vex, if you so wish, give me a constitution check to see if this wakes you up. Uh, That's a six. That was a six? Six, yes. Okay. Oh, and um, by the way, you took six points of damage from the fall. Okay. Uh, Hit points, one, two. Okay, so Vex is still unconscious, and now you're finding out why what you're standing on is still unstable. It's because something else was caught in this cave-in along with you, and it bursts out of the ground at this point. It it does look somewhat injured, and it's got salt in the wounds, so ouch. It's it's not happy. It, it It is less than happy. I am opening its stats. Um, it it is um, it looks like a large grub of some kind with giant eyes in the front of it, tentacles coming out around its mouth. Its mouth is a horror show of pedipalps and little pinchers, um, and it lunges towards the group on 
little legs that you're not entirely sure should be able to support its weight. Clarification for the unconscious half elf. I'm guessing no ship. <laughs> you're guessing yeah. what? No what? ship. No ship? Ship, Shepherd. Puppy. Oof, oh. oof. Bark, bark. Um, well, the party hasn't seen Shepherd yet, so they don't know. I swear to God. <laughs> if only I had gear grown special. <laughs> No, we have it. It's all around it's us. It's all over the place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one breath weapon. I guarantee you, you'll kill this thing. It's and everyone hard. else. Yes. That's important. It important will not, safety tip. <laughs> it will not be a total party kill, however, because since two of the party members are currently AFK, they'll survive. The rest of us are just to make new characters. The, yeah, the, there won't be any body left to resurrect. Uh, well, so there, essentially, there will be we a need fine a fine mist. So we, we need a level making druid at that point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at this point, we have an I'm angry, to... spidery-looking thing at us. It's more like a, a overgrown grub. Oh, uh, okay, like a worm. Yes, but it does have legs. They're just really <sighs> short legs. So oh. <laughs> Okay, initiative rolls. Is that a 20 again? <laughs> yes, and I will call out individual names so I can write them down properly. Okay, Fenix. 14. Okay. Next up, uh, Vex. Uh, 15 for the unconscious half-elf. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, when it's your turn, you get to roll another constitution save. Yeah. Ari. Uh, Alright, got a 20. Total of 20. And, Meepo, because of your dexterity, you have an initiative bonus of plus one, which you can see on your sheet, so d20 mm -hmm. roll plus one. Okay, so I got a three, because my dice wants to kill me tonight, and plus one is four. Well... Being at the top of the initiative is only really, really important for the first round. So uh, that's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Good point. Mm -hmm. Especially since our person in front is our spell guy. <laughs> that that's true. Um, Ari gets to go first. Ari, what would you like to do? All right. Since I am not a hundred percent sure what this thing is, um, actually, you can you can go ahead and give me a history check if you want. I will do that. History is one of the ones I'm good at. Ooh. That is a 16 on the die plus 7, so 23. Okay, you've read about these. Um, it is a carrion crawler. Hmm. What One of the nasty things that we're not quite sure how it got to Circulus, but it got here um, many, many millennia ago. Um, there's been more than one recorded sighting of these things. Um, throughout the history of the Empire, and they did keep good records when they weren't destroying the records to keep their own narrative. Ah, dictators. Pretty much. Yeah. I had a... I, player again had a strong <coughs> feeling of what it was, but I have to assume the character does not yet know. Okay, well... well yep. I, and I I appreciate you for not metagaming, but at this point, yeah, you know what this is. It's a carrion crawler. Yeah, carrion crawler. Okay. You, you know that it has the ability to paralyze its foes. Um, that could be bad. Yes. Okay. He's a Again, big, if ugly only star. I had you run your special. He's a big, ugly mug. All right. Hmm, fire might be bad with all this alcohol around. If you miss. Um, with the amount you smell, it might be... <laughs> you, you, you might not want to even light a match. Okay. Well then, we're going to try to keep it simple. We're going to open up with the Melf's Acid Arrow. As a ranged spell attack. And that's a crit. Woo! Woo. I'm fairly sh certain mm -hmm. that uh, 20 does beat this thing's armor class, yes. With my add-on of a, let's see, spell attack is plus, on, let's see, what is it? 
uh, three. So it goes to 23. <laughs> All right. So that means rain spell attack. I get to double the damage. And Melf's acid arrow does 4d4 acid. So that would be 8d4. Yeah, that's going to hurt. There's a lot of d4. Yeah, I don't have that many. <laughs> I do have six. I have seven, I think. I had lost some over the years, so... You, you'll find them anytime you're walking around your home at night. Oh, that's on. the worst. I did that last night. All right. Worse than Legos. Two, three, it's five. Oh, three, it's stepping eight. in a Lego. Exactly. It's 12. Hmm. Stepping in a D4 is worse One, than stepping in a Lego. It's 15. Two, pointer. two more. 18, and two is 20. Can 20 acid tell, damage. Can you tell that the party got to level 5? We had to pause to count D4 rolls. So 20 damage, you said. 20, yeah, 20 acid damage. I don't know if it necessarily takes more or less from another source. And then he will take 2d4 on his next turn. Well, at this point, he's bloodied. Excellent. Damn. This was... This is... This particular encounter was not meant to be an even match for the party before the overpowered ranger showed up. <laughs> I just... Speaking. I just love... I just love that you appreciate that I'm an overpowered ranger. Yes. Speaking um, of said overpowered ranger. Speaking of overpowered rangers, Vex, it is your turn. Give me a constitution save to wake up. Uh, that is a 16. Okay, that wakes you up inside. Save me from the nothing I become. And then I get a copyright strike. Awesome. Sorry, it's my favorite song. It's, it's literally my favorite song. I apologize. No, 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 no. Don't apologize. Because that, that was... That was the reaction I was going for. I cannot be upset when I got what I asked for. Okay, yeah. so you wake up cradled in a dragon what a mess. arms. <laughs> what a mess, big guy. And, <laughs> and there's no shepherd. Oh, no. And you see half of shepherds. You see half no, no, of shepherds. You, you, don't, the you don't even see a tuft of fur. Do I see the thing that I'm a, that that's attacking us at least? Um, I, yes, I, I think it's safe to say everyone sees it. Yeah, I have okay. my wand has a my wand's got a light spell on it right now. Oh, I, I have dark vision, so. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm screwing that up. <laughs> you, yeah. No, no, because I'm 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 am I am I within twenty feet of him? I'm guessing. Yes, no. Um. Yeah, you're you're all within twenty feet of this thing. Okay, then yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in a. <laughs> You're in a small corner of this cave, the only part of it that appears to be dry land. Um, okay, well, I uh, I dismount the dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I we need fans so we can have fan art of um, Phoenix wearing a saddle on his back. That was sad. You just said we need fans. <laughs> well, the, uh, everyone in who fairness, I know listens Errol... to this show is currently part of the party. Wait. Yeah, we had a fan. Now she's our now and she's now our, uh, our kobold. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um. So I dismount the dragonborn, and I would like to take two shots at the weird thing. Now that I can do that. Okay. Well, uh, dismounting does use half your movement, so your movement That's is fine. now fifteen. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't need to move. <laughs> uh, Actually, so... no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because you used your action this turn to wake up. Oh, got so, that. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you 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 might get your shot, um, because Ari might not survive when this thing lunges at him at this point. Um, it is Fenix's turn. Fenix, you are no longer. Can holding I use the, the rest elf. of my movement? To, can I use the rest of my movement to back up the fifteen feet then away from the thing? Uh, you can stumble backwards, sure. Okay. You are now um, ankle deep in loose rock and salt. Not the worst thing Vex has been in. I'm going to lunge for this thing. Okay. I will need a d20 roll. 21. Nope. Yeah. 
No, that's definitely not a 21. That's a 28. A so 28. much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, his, his longsword is plus two, and he's proficient in it. And he's a paladin that's specialized in dueling, which means he gets a bonus towards un, uh, one-handed strikes. So 28 works. Um, give me 1d8 plus 8 damage. I'm in love with the Dragonborn. Holy crap. Um, 14 damage? 14 damage. You slice the thing's head off. Woohoo! Wow. Take that, it did, Ed. It, it, its turn was next. It didn't get to do anything. It was like, Rah, you landed on me. I'm mad. I'm dead. This is what happens when anything comes big and hurts them. And its body just starts sizzling because it's still covered in Mel's acid arrow. Yeah. Right, so the thing is dead. The thing is dead. Can I cast Speak with Animals on myself and just start shouting Shepard, obviously, and Wolf so he can hear me? You and do understand so. me? Care- careful, uh, Bex. This, I'm not sure this is entirely stable here. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. Watch this your your sentence is punctuated by additional rumbles. These humans do not know how to make good tunnels. Um, for the record, this tunnel does not appear to be carved out. It appears to have been eroded out. Yes, but um, we fell in. Should not have happened. <laughs> this I, would not happen if, if, if this was a cold plan. Nope. Can I do some kind of check to see if I can see him while uh, whilst shouting for him? Um, sure. Give me a perception check. Okay. You do not have advantage because it is, Shepard is not humanoid. But he's my puppy. <laughs> he will always be your fur baby, but he is not a humanoid. Doesn't matter. Probably gonna be a that's dead a natural baby, 20. You see no up to 25 sign perception. of Shepard. Oh, Just yeah. his head hanging off. Of his no, that would be a sign <laughs> of Shepard. He sees nothing that says Shepard is in the area. He sees nothing that says Shepard is in any danger. That's useful. We need to get out of here. Before more of this either piles on our heads or collapses further. How? He's not here. I don't know where he is, but he's not here. Maybe he did not fall in. Possibly. Can I pull out of my bag of tricks? You most certainly can. Uh, it's D8, and it's the rusted one. I pull out a... Four... I pull out a goat. I thought you said you pull out I a was re- I was really hoping you'd get the least helpful animal, just just for the sake of the RP. Hey, <laughs> half dead rat. I'm just getting the stats for a goat, so that it's... At least somewhat helpful. <laughs> it has negative five health. Oh, you are not helpful, Mr. Go at all. <laughs> okay, you know hey, what? Uh, just remember, previously, previously on oh. Circulus, um, you, you did have a goat do a takedown attack on a chain devil. No, and I had a goat. giant goat do a oh, takedown attack goat. on a, a no- chain okay. devil. This is a normal goat. Okay. Okay, so you ha- you summon a normal goat, and it stands at the ready, and starts chewing uh, on um, the the hem of Meepo's shirt. And I can I just, throw the I goat like to, a cannon. I just say to the goat, Barnabas, you're here until Shepard's back. Okay. <laughs> I've made him Barnabas. I want to ride the goat. I am too small for this place, and there's too much water, and I don't like it. I want to ride the goat to be taller. Well, I do still have Speak With Animals on, so Barnabas, allow me to ride on you. Okay. Yay! And I climb up and have a new mount. Give me an animal handling check. Me or her? You're not the one riding the goat. <laughs> um, what do I roll? 20 again? Uh, yeah, anytime you're doing a check, it's going to be a d20. It's, it's 20. Okay. And it's your wisdom on this. You have okay. Wisdom. I have an 11, and wisdom is plus 1. So 12? 
Okay, that is sufficient. You're not doing... Uh, your animal handling is also one, so that that's great. Um, you're not doing anything that really um, intense. You're, you're not trying to, like, jump over barriers at, at a show while, while wearing a silly little hat. So um, you're able to stay on top of this goat pretty well. Cool. <laughs> also, please bear in mind, it has four hit points, so, uh, yeah. Also, Be bear careful. in mind, Meepo's a kobold. If she was a standard cobalt, it's possible the goat would be her tank. <laughs> okay. This goat's so, gonna be cannon fire. This goat's um, my wagon. In the gloom, you can kind of make out if you look at the image that I shared in Discord um, many images ago because people are posting pictures of goats now. Um, <laughs> goats rock. Yeah, there are two openings at towards the bottom of the. You're at the top of the image. Towards the bottom, there are two different openings that go off into the gloom. Definitely make our way towards those openings. Okay. We may have to see if uh, Phoenix or Vex, see if you either of you can hear anything coming from either of those openings. Sure, Maybe. I will uh, lessen. Okay. Um, give me a perception check. Uh, eight plus four. Five is 13. You definitely hear the sound of moving water. It's not moving very fast. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there's definitely some moving. And you can kind of hear it through both openings. Okay. But you don't know if it's louder in one or the other because they're, they're too close together. Okay. There's not much gap between those two openings. So um, we're, we're wading through water then, I'm guessing, yes? Or yeah, it's, it's about half a foot deep. Okay. Um, there left. Is there, is there anything on the walls to kind of indicate uh, people going down these ways, anything like that? I don't think anybody's been down here for ages. Um, as as oh, you're looking yeah. around, um, you you do notice that there's some flotsam floating in the water uh, it appears to be tattered clothing you don't know if it what wh what quality clothing it is it's kind of torn up uh, there are some bones in here you're guessing um, these are remnants of the carrion crawlers meal meals plural um, well that thing won't be bothering anybody anymore yes um, now you do know that carrion crawlers prefer corpses. Yeah. Um, so these things are probably already dead. Yeah. Yes. They, and, well, we and fell out of a felt... cemetery of sorts. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. We were Sorry. watching somebody get buried, and we fell once while the burial was ongoing, and the floor fell out from underneath. I missed um, that part. Sorry. So, yeah. so it's so it is even possible that what you're looking at are like basically the carrion crawler was raiding the cemetery. Yeah. For easy meals. It might be the reason there was a cave-in in the first place. Yeah. More um, than likely, let's be honest. Yeah. Okay. And I blame it. Uh, actually, everyone give me a perception check that hasn't already rolled one. So, Vex, you already did yours. Yes. So everyone else give me one, too. Do we roll it a second time? or I don't remember what uh, mine was. Just roll d d20 and add your perception. Okay. okay. All right, so. 16 plus plus one, 17. Okay. Ari, Ari got a 21. Okay, so Ari, you find a partially crushed skull. It's missing the bottom half of the jaw. But but the, the top teeth are mostly intact. There, there's a big hole in the side of the head. Um, but this skull has very pointed canines. Huh. Well, that's not a dwarf or an elf. It's it's humanoid in nature. Uh, it, it, um, you can't tell one humanoid skull from another very much. Uh, that's yeah, but, not really where your training lies. No. But, but those teeth are... You know that orcs have very large tusks, but that's in the bottom jaw. Right. You, you haven't spent a lot of time looking at the top half of their mouth. Yeah. Um... But you haven't seen teeth this pointed. Um, 
Meepo, you find a shiny. A shiny. Yes. Yay. Um, you find a tie tack that is a, a diamond um, in a gold inlay. Oh, yes. fancy. Fancy shiny. Yes, you also find the tie that it's attached to. And as you go to pick it up, half of a corpse comes up with it. Oh. And then the tie breaks because it's been sitting in salt water for you who knows how long. And the body goes back down with a splash. And you're, okay, holding, half, you're holding half a tie. In is the shiny case. in the tie? I'm sorry, what is, was that? Is the shiny still in the tie I'm holding? Yes. <laughs> Yay, I found the shiny. Okay. I found a rock. I mean, a skull. <laughs> <laughs> a skull. And Phoenix, um, you find a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> you find a locket. It's locket. one of those. Yeah, it's one of those things where um, if you press a little switch, it opens up, and there's pictures on the inside on either half. <laughs> um, but the, the locket has a design on the front of it of a wagon. Yes. Can I, can I have a look at that skull that he found? Sure. See if I can yeah. determine what race it is. I'll pass it along. This isn't my area, but I know you know more about humanoids. Exactly. Well, if you're going to examine the skull, I'm going to need an... Um, I'm going to say for this, it would be a, a nature check. And there could be other checks, but I'm going to say it's nature. Humanoid? I am trained in nature. Could I assist him in this check? I already have him out because it's humanoid. Oh, oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, that's a 17. Because it's a zero. This is plus zero in nature. You're not entirely sure what this is. It doesn't correspond with the humanoids that you're familiar with. Hmm. Well, it's not from Farron, that's for sure. I can't identify it from anything from Circulus, although it is missing its mandible. I just put the wagon picture next to him like this works. Possibly from another realm. Well, we know that there's something pulling things here, so... Yeah. And Fenix, just so you know, you haven't opened the locket yet. The wagon design is a relief sculpture uh, on the outside of it. Is there, like, a key or something like that? No, it's, it's got a little button on the top that you're supposed to press, and then it pops open. It's got a is latch it? that you press to open it up. Can I push it? Um, you go to push it, but it is so encrusted with salt that nothing happens. It would probably have to be cleaned somehow. I mean, dragon breath can clean a lot of things. No! You... No, <laughs> no! Very, very bad. Bad Phoenix. No biscuit. Uh, salt doesn't burn very well. And you'd probably incinerate the... The locket would probably melt. It is made of gold, and gold is a very low temperature melting metal. And the cave will explode. Well, there's that too. Hey, okay, we can yeah. find out. We can just test. No. <laughs> no. no. Bad dragonborn. No biscuit. Can Mr. Just take Phoenix. Mr. Well, Phoenix. Well, what, where's, where's your dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Phoenix, can I see the shiny? <laughs> I was about to... Okay, here you go. And I want to use prestidigitation to clean it. Oh, you are wonderful. <laughs> Okay, so you cast prestidigitation, and um, a significant amount of moisture and salt just flies out of it and goes off in, into the air and then rains down like snow. Ooh, prettier now. Here you go. Thank you. That was excellent work, Miko. Meepo. Thank you. Me Meepo, have I ever told you you're wonderful? Um, not till today. You're wonderful, honey. Thank you. Okay. So, the locket is cleaned. Now I'll push the button. Okay, you push the button, the world explodes. 
No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And then Aren't wagons the fall out of the world. <laughs> yes. Oh wait, that already happened. Um, so the locket opens, and um, the inside has been damaged through exposure to the salt water over an extreme amount of time. Um, you don't know how long, but it, it it's not a recent addition. It's been here for a while, you guess. Uh, but you can make out um, what you think is a man and a woman on opposite on opposite sides of the locket. Um, they have rather serious expressions on their faces. Uh, think like any time you see photographs of people from the Old West where they're posing in front of the camera. It's an image sort of like that. Um, th their, their faces look very pale and they appear to be both wearing uh, rather somber colors like Dark earth tones and blacks. Hmm. You Still don't pretty. recognize either of them. But the locket's nice. Might fetch some coin. Are we going through this tunnel then? Well, there's two. Whether we head straight south or southwest, I we can't really make any determination. There's no track we can to follow. Pull it up. Either yeah, way, might that's I horribly suggest, bad. Might I suggest that we uh, do this stealthily, as best we can, at least. Considering I'm almost seven feet tall. Well, Considering you're that you're armor. ankle deep in water, yeah. Every step you're going to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all for proceeding slowly. As but here's the thing, I do have pass without a trace. That will keep, yeah. keep you from being tracked. Right. So no, no, no one will know that you pass through Ankh-Deepwater. A veil of shadow and silence water. radiates from you. So it, as long as people are within 30 feet of me, they create no sound as long as they do good rolls. Ari, well, Ari's... Uh, I'm not trained in stealth. Uh, you get a plus I, 10 to your dexterity stealth check. Oh, well then, never mind. I'm plus trained your in normal stealth. Rolls. I'm suddenly as, trained in stealth. As long as you don't pull out a set of bagpipes, the kind that yeah. spit fire out of them when you're playing them, you'll probably be okay. I, I cast Pass we... Without a Trace on us. How long does that last? An hour. An hour? Oh, it's, a, as an, it's an hour and it's concentration, so I can't do Hunter's uh, Mark or anything like that. Okay. But it also so, does yeah. mean that I lose my speak with animals, but that's fine. That's okay. Um, we, I don't think Shepard's down here. I didn't. No, I don't think he is either. Yeah. Um, so, stealth checks? Uh, remember, which, normal which, bonuses plus t add plus ten. Which direction, south or southwest? I don't think it seems to make any difference based on what you could hear. I would say south. I just have a feeling. All right, so we're bearing left. He thinks tonight's going to be a good night. Yeah, I have a feeling, and that's it. Eleven. Was that with ten. The plus ten. He plus probably 10. did. He probably did. Was that a one plus ten that you rolled? Yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> um, Big clumsy dragonborn. Right, well, mine's was a twenty-nine. Okay, I've got sixteen plus stealth is one seventeen. Plus ten. Should probably plus roll 10? for the goat. For uh Wait, yeah, pass without a trace. Yeah, Vex cast a spell uh, that gives you plus ten. Okay. So So you got a twenty seven love. Okay, thanks. Uh, Goat got a... Ari has a 23. Not terrible. 14 for the Goat with z zero dex modifier. Ari got a 23. Okay. And Vex got a 29. Okay, so the Ranger and the Wizard um, pass without a trace basically acting like a character from a Metal Gear game. Um, and this proxy battles. The goat and the kobold additionally ride or are ridden, as the case may be, silently through the water. Um, Fenix also acts like a character out of a Metal Gear game, but he acts like a character that's currently wearing a cardboard box so he can't see where he's going. 
<laughs> trips over something in the water and does a belly flop. Oh. Then quickly stands up, looks around, and says, it was Meepo. Just <laughs> no, no, stay within 30 that. feet, guys. Just stay within 30 feet. <laughs> I just whispered to Meepo, Meepo, you go with the art my second favorite again. But uh, as Eclipsid, <laughs> super OP rangers. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, Eclipse. E Eclipse posted this. <laughs> that, that is, thank you. That fills me with great joy. I I think that I'm afraid to click on that because I'm afraid it'll play a movie. And I'll it's not. It's just on. a. It's just a meme. It's just a picture. Just a picture. Okay. <laughs> that that makes me happy because I, now I don't have the temptation to click on it to to, to play it anyway. All right. So you go south. And I know what room that takes you to, so I need to show you the picture of it. I've been waiting to get level 5 so I could pass without a trace. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> okay, so this room... Uh, this irregular passage opens into a wider cavern after a small choke point. Um, to okay. one side, you see a smallish opening in the wall which your best guess based on its placement would lead to the other route that you could have taken. Um, but um, to the south more is where you hear the source of water coming from. Um, there is a rather slow but noticeable current. Which direction is it going? Um, the, you're on the edge of it. Further south, you you think it's going from, and I'm using the top of the map as arbitrary north. You're not entirely sure that's north. Okay. Um. But further to the south, you think it would be going east to west. Okay. Shall we keep going? Shall we keep yeah. moving? Yeah. I, I. We need to get find an exit or somewhere. To go up. Okay, and Vex, I got everyone else's passive perception, but what's yours? My passive perception is 15. Okay. Um, as, as you're going through this opening, you see a small bundle um, sort of staked to the wall with, with like nails or pitons or something like that. Okay. I tell the group to hold up and can I Look at it. A bit sure. more investigation to it. It looks like a small rucksack or something. Okay. Um, any strange odors coming from it, just in case it's possibly trapped? Can I check? Okay. Um, you can check. You see. Well, give me a. Um, I would say an investigation roll. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> you see a small rucksack. Script. It appears to not have a timer appearing above it. You don't hear a ticking noise. <laughs> um, there's no noticeable I... wire going off into the distance that someone can pull. I would like to look inside the rucksack. You find a bomb. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, there, there is this, um, a length of fuse. Um, it looks like a an explosive that would be used for a mining operation. Um, there is a significant length of fuse that it's coiled up like this was ready to be set off but the person who set it up <laughs> wasn't ready to set it off when they put it there okay I gently put it back <laughs> and slowly back away <laughs> let's was not touch fuse? any more of those things was the fuse lit no it was not lit yeah. Okay. They, they put it there to prepare it and now that it's there, that they're not they didn't do anything with it. So okay. just a heads up, people. If you see any more bags like that stapled to the wall, there are bombs in them. Let's avoid them. Throw throw it's you know. Throw gear grinder special off the bomb. You, you have no gear grinder special! <laughs> but 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 it it'll be awesome. It would just what? make the bomb wet. Yep. Shall we continue? I think we should continue. Because the bottle would cut wire. 
<laughs> As we get closer to the possible, the, what the suspected current change, can I confirm the direction it's going? Oh, most definitely. A and I'm laughing at Eclipse's picture of a cardboard box with not snake written on the side of it. <laughs> okay, you've gone into room seven. Woo. Okay, this fairly large chamber um, bears noticeable signs of erosion due to the slow but constant flow of water slowly dissolving away the salt deposits. Um, there is a narrow opening to the east that the water is coming from. Um, it appears to be less salty over there. You could almost, like, most of this water is just like a, a white hazy sludge but it's noticeably darker which means noticeably clearer towards this opening um, as it comes from the east the current is continuing to the south should we follow the current or should we check down the passageways I'm not sure um... now to the east the only person with you that you think might be able to go through that would be Meepo, and she'd have to go underwater to do it. Okay. The fresh water seems to be coming from that way, which to me would indicate that might be a way out, but we'd have to fight the current, and Meepo's the only one who's going to fit. Uh, and since she doesn't breathe water, uh, I, I can punch her way. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're better suited finding another exit. Yeah, because I don't think punching our way out of this is going to be a good idea, considering yeah. how unstable this cavern is as it is. Yeah. Yep. Are you seeing how unstable those mm. wagons are? But they fit. Mm. No, Punching is things is not bad. always the solution. The current isn't so fast, we can't cross it, is it? Um, no, and it's still only about six inches deep. It's okay, a very so it's slow not... current. You, you can see the water moving because there's enough debris yeah. that's sort of floating in it. But it th there's no struggle here. Okay. Nope. Let's just cross it and keep going south. Okay. We'll do that. Can I have my bow out with an arrow notch ready to go just in case? Because I have, I have a bad feeling. <laughs> yeah. There were, we already found some nasties. In fact, I think what I will do is I will cast mage armor on myself in case we find more crispy critters. Okay. Otherwise, I think we're safely going to head south. Anyway. Okay, so you are now in room eight. Um, this salt slurry is noticeably stronger. Uh, the current is noticeably stronger in this room. Um, continuing downstream, you're ent not entirely sure you'd be able to keep your footing. Um, there is a large opening to the west uh, where the current seems almost non-existent, but... Um, you, you can't see where that leads. I think at this point now, we probably follow the current. Hopefully it leads out. Yeah, that sounds like a solid plan. Okay. Um, so you continue south, and as you do so, um, everyone give me a dexterity save. Oh, okay. Eighteen. I'm gonna need one for the goat too. Oh god! <laughs> we got the goat. No. Ten for the goat. Somehow any... I think we're going to have an ex goat. Did mm. anyone get less than ten? No, oh, me. What did nope. you get? Oh no! Was it a natural one, Logan? Yes. Okay, Logan. Um, the ground here as. As the current gets stronger, the erosion also gets stronger. Um, so therefore, it has sort of smoothed out the surface underneath the water. So you slip to a sort of half spin on the way down, land face first in a second belly flop of the evening, and quickly start sliding away from the party. Uh-oh. Can I'm I gonna try ask and grab you to him? Give me a, 
Um, well, if you want to try to grab them, you can give me a dexterity check. Just a check? A dexterity save. Okay. Uh, 16. You managed to grab Phoenix, oh, Phoenix rather, uh, by the arm. Give me a... Give me a, a second dexterity check to see if you keep your footing. Because now you have a Dragonborn's weight pulling on you in addition to the... Uh, that's a check, not a save. That'll be a check. Uh, um, sex. We now have a Dragonborn and a Half-Elf sliding down the tunnel <laughs> away from the party. Fenix, give me a strength check. Oh, yeah. That wasn't creepy. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh no. Just kidding, I'm all naked. Oh, okay, you managed to grab onto an outcropping of rock to keep you from um, going further into the tunnel, which is probably good because you're fairly certain you hear a waterfall. You don't know how far away it is because you don't have dark vision. And you it? are far, and you are far enough away from Ari that you can't benefit from his light cantrip. Um, Vex, you asked if you could see it. Yep. Okay, so the table is turned. You were trying to hold Fenix to keep him from sliding. Now he's holding you by the same arm. <laughs> a and as you look down current, um, you see the water. And then you don't see water. Oh, God. Uh -oh. How far away? Maybe about 10, 20 feet. So maybe following the current was not a good idea. Maybe yeah, following yeah. the current was a bad idea. All right. <laughs> Ari has some rope. Uh, he's not the strongest man in the party. So You also uh, have a goat and a cobalt to help you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can All I right. just what? shout, tie it to a... Was it tie it to yeah, one of those yeah. small bags. Uh, you know. <laughs> no. I don't know. Is it a stalactite I, I or a stalagmite? And throw a meepo over here. Tight hold on top might, might reach the ceiling, so we want a stalagmite, hopefully. Tie it to a stalagmite. Stalagmites I... hold tight to the ceiling. Yep. I can throw Vex. Don't, don't throw Vex. <laughs> Never <laughs> toss like a half out. Don't, don't, half don't throw the half elves. Maybe. Uh, never half elves. We're too big. They're too fragile. Yeah, our delicate little elven bodies. All right, Ari will try to tie it off to a stalag mite, and hopefully then toss the rope to his friends. He goes and one of the rope is fall from the water. And. I will let you roll either an athletics or acrobatics check to see if you manage to um, use this rope to pull yourself to safety. Okay. I am horrible at athletics, so we will take acrobatics. Well, you, you're and... fine. This, this oh. is... Oh, um, them. Yeah. The, okay, you, sorry. You sent the rope down, and it's already yeah. tied to something, so they, they can pull yeah. themselves up. Okay. Surprisingly, athletics is my best out of the two, which is strength. <laughs> Oh, you're trained in it, right? Yep, because I'm proficient. Uh, that's a 15 for athletics. That is sufficient. Okay. How about you, Fenix? Athletics? Or acrobatics, if you want to live on the wild side. Actually, the way you're climbing up this rope, it's rem reminiscent of the old Batman uh, when live action up with the that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I've just got an image of a half elf and a dragonborn pulling themselves up. Uh, it was brilliant. Twelve. You slip and slide a bit. Oh, God. And, and you, you take um, 3d8 points of damage to your dignity. Um, but you do manage to pull yourself to safety. So that wasn't the brightest idea we've had. No. I keep saying this. We're not good at this adventuring thing. No, <laughs> but we try hard. <laughs> we try very hard. You try hard. We try hard. Yes. Okay, so 
unless you decide to take the waterfall challenge, you have um, two options. You can go back to the north or head to the west. We came from that way. Uh, why don't we go west? West sounds like the, a better yeah. idea. Okay, that will take you to room 10. Um, the ground on... The ground under the liquid you've been sloshing through uh, drops off steeply to a depth of about two feet. Uh, Miko, you are quite happy to be riding a goat. The goat is yep. a little less happy about the situation. How tall is the goat? Um, it is able to lift its head it's up a, a bit. Medium, it's a medium-sized creature, so yes. Okay. It's it's Lower. not a big. It's not one of those. Uh, um, it's not like you're riding trinket or anything like that. It's not, not a, a baby pig. goat. <laughs> not a pygmy goat. Okay, yes, good. It's, it, it, it's a full-grown goat, the kind that um, attacked me at a petting zoo once when I was a child, and my parents filmed it um, oh, uh, on 8mm. Yeah, I have no memory of this. Oh. I apparently blocked it out, but they make a point to remind me every now and then. Uh, it keeps me in my wow. place. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a true story. Uh, but in any I'm case... It's a story. The, the goat is able to have its head above water. It's still not happy about being submerged in brine. Um, you have a feeling that if the goat didn't disappear upon death, this marination might actually make the meat taste better. <laughs> <laughs> Tis um, a shame. <laughs> yes. Um, and if, as you look above, you do see um, there are spider webs on the ceiling above you. Has the smell of alcohol gone away now? Oh, that that was gone when we left back, the front room. Yeah, when you hit room seven, it was gone. All right. I miss like those webs up there. And from the looks of this, you could go west or south. Um, there, there is not really any current in here. Keep going west. Well, I picked, the... I picked the waterfall, so maybe yeah. you should pick. Yeah, right, <laughs> your turn. Let's go west. The water's flowing that way, so... Or was. Okay, the young man decides to go west. I'm a bad person. We know. Uh-oh. Oh, did you hear the sheriff's name? No. His, his last name is Dente. You already know, don't you? <laughs> oh, crashed. You and I are going to have a long back. talk. <laughs> I didn't name the sheriff or the town. I don't I, I don't name believe you. But he did name the deputy. No, no. The sheriff <laughs> used to be the deputy. I named I named the sheriff who was who was dead. And his name is Craig <laughs> Bronzehammer. You should name the new sheriff Rack. Okay. Um, this irregularly shaped passage has the the now standard two feet of salty sludge. Um, what makes it worse is that the ceiling is much lower here. It's only about one or two feet above the water line. Oh, great! Remind me why and, I left my college. <laughs> <laughs> so so the taller members of the party are having to crouch down. Meepo, you don't really see much of a problem. Um, nope. All good. Now, Vex, as you crouch down, you come face to face with another small bundle. Is it the same thing I saw? It's the same manufacturer. You okay. haven't looked inside of it. I just say to the group, don't touch the thing. Another haversack, as it were. Well, if it's it, it looks the same as the last one, so I'm going to assume there's explosives in it. A safe assumption. Why should you be like a pot of gold in there? And he's like, God dang it. Yeah, I'm actually kind of regretting just walking past it. Can I look in it very quickly? Sure. Oh no. <laughs> well, now, in this damp, I don't know that it would be it would be able to light the fuse on it. So. Um, the, they do make fuses that can burn even underwater. Yeah, but do they have those here? You don't know. 
Uh, yeah, I'm not willing to try and find <laughs> out. There, there is a way to find out. No, I have a, I have a oh, fireball cantrip that would find out very fast. Oh, press digitation <laughs> can light a small candle, so it could easily work yeah. on this. Yeah. Just, just say the word and Meepo can hook you up. Is it the same thing as before? It's a mimic. Like no, Meepo's... no, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> I would like to think Meepo's sense of self-preservation was stronger than that. <laughs> she hasn't well, encountered explosives before. Her whole logic for being with us was self-preservation. So. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> if you light that on fire, it will explode. What does my, explode? My guess is, my guess is <laughs> if Meepo doesn't see you running, she's going to assume it's safe. But that's my guess. I will clearly and very loudly to the group again say, don't touch the bag. It's dangerous. Which bag? This bag? This yeah. bag here? <laughs> this, 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 this bag here? As, 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 I don't know which character would be doing this, but this is poking the bag. Like, this bag? This, this is the bag I shouldn't be poking? This one? Well, let's be quite Speaking honest. Poking, poking it, I'm just going to touch the bag slowly. Yeah. Punk, punk would be punching the bag. Be punk. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right about that. As what now? <laughs> as this passage continues out, you can either um, go and continue straight but there's a wider opening to the south well we know the south probably heads back to that waterfall so I say we keep going you, west you've gone well, far enough west. you've uh, gone far current. enough west that um, like when, when you went south before and it was heading to the waterfall that passage was curving to the east uh, how's so, the current there is no current there's there no current no here current. It's Black just water. deeper. Yeah, it's stagnant. Stagnant, yes. that's the word. Thank you. The, the only sign way. of the current is from you walking through it. Right. Us disturbing the water. Can we... Do we want to head west or south? Do we want to take a listen? See if we hear anything different over here? Sure. I'll take a listen. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, that's a 24 for perception. Um, I gotta check my notes. The plip plop of water dripping. Um, you also hear something like there's there's something in the water bumping into something else in the water, but it might be because of the current that's extending out from your passage through. You have created ripples. The, the, these sounds are not very loud sounds. You are only hearing them because of your very high perception check. Meepo is just slap slamming the water. I, I that... think it's been established that you're the one doing that, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's not any sounds coming from either passage other than sounds we're making and possible water dripping from stalactites. As you say uh... this, a drop of water lands on your nose. <laughs> like that. Let's keep going west. Okay. All right. This rather large room does not appear to be too aesthetically different from every other room you've been in, um, except for the increased sense of foreboding that you're feeling. Uh, it's almost like there's some alien presence just beyond the boundaries of your mind trying to find a way in. That, or you shouldn't have had chili as the lunch menu for today. Burp. The funny thing is, I did actually have chili for lunch. <laughs> the DM knows all. You are really creepy sometimes. <laughs> this is not a good case. Bad time to no. mention we had hot dogs and chili cheese dogs for dinner. Yum. But no, I do agree this place isn't... No, this isn't right. Can I do a general perception check to see if there's anything that's... Because we've been around this place, we've been around the place and seen other areas. Is there anything that seems out of the ordinary for this area specifically? I think Ari is going to take a moment and also do his uh, free detect magic while we're in here. See if there's anything magical. Because the aura seems a little funny to him.
Okay, um... You're gonna find something, but what you find depends on... Give me the description of Detect Magic again. Uh, give me a sec here. See if I can get to it before you do. I think it just tells you the school, doesn't it? It's not just telling you the school. There, there's other details. Right. For, for the duration, magic. you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. I needed the distance. Uh, if you oh, sense magic okay. this way, you can use your action to... So you have to use your action uh, to, to see the aura of any right. visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. And you learn the school of magic, if any. Um, the spell can penetrate most barriers, but it is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. This is why I was asking. Okay. Okay. So, based on where you are, um, yes, you are certain there is magic nearby. Then I will take an action to attempt to see the aura and learn its school of magic. And now I've got to look up schools of magic. Do what I do. Just go necromancy. <laughs> 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 like everything in my um, Total War campaign is necromancy. You detect Hogwarts. <laughs> Which house, though? Slytherin. Oh, the best one. Head for the hills. Why am I not shocked? Because <laughs> you've known me for, what, six years? Something like that. <laughs> thing is, this is something where it doesn't say it on the thing that you're detecting magic on. Which bothers me. Um, conjuration. So something's been summoned, or something summons, or has been and, summoned. And because you used your action, you can see the aura. You, you, of course, see the various auras of the magical items that party members have on them. Right. Um, Fenix's sword, in particular, has a very bright glow. Um, you wouldn't need your light cantrip in here. Um, but the water itself is glowing. Oh. In here? Yes. Okay. Um, so. Specifically, a point in the middle of this cavern. Rather close to where you're standing. And the magical aura of it is condensing. It's It was a larger area when you first used your action... <laughs> And now it's narrowing into a smaller point and rising up from the surface. Okay. Something's coming. The something is here. Roll initiative. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, wow. Natural 20 on my initiative. Damn. <laughs> advantage is nice. Yeah, I do love having advantage on my initiative. So what's the total number? Uh, 23. Okay, and Fenix? Oh, you got 19? Yeah, I That's got with... 17. Okay, Miba got 17. You're back. Oh, wait. Plus one. Just saw that. That's a good thing. And that made me check the initiative modifier for this thing and made me realize I needed to change where I placed it in the order. Ari got a 10. You didn't get a rock. Nope. <laughs> now everything's in order. Okay, so Vex, you're up first and there is um you've been to beaches before. You've seen waves before. It looks like a wave in okay. the middle of this room and it's facing the party can and moving towards a, you can i do a check see if i know what this is um sure nature go ahead thank you <laughs> 
Bex doesn't know what this is because that's a natural one. You know it's water. Yep, you're I know. fairly sure it's water. <laughs> also, you're yeah. fairly sure it shouldn't be able to do that, but this water is rather viscous with all the salt in it. Yep. Um. Okay, so I'm pretty confident we're not going to need Pass Without a Trace. Can I Hunter's Mark it? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take two shots on it. Sure. Because I'm going before it, I get advantage. So that is a plus eight to hit. So that's a 20 to hit. A 20 will hit. Uh, and that is 13 points of piercing damage. Okay. Second shot. Uh, 26 to hit. Nice to hit. Uh, 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 3. 15 points of piercing damage. And then just for fun, we'll send the goat in. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, yeah, can, don't do that. Yeah, okay. Can, can it, uh, I was going to say, can it buck Meepo up? I think it'll hurt That would her. be its action. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never mind okay. then. Uh, can it? So can it hold his action and ready up a charge? It can hold its action. You can have it go in anywhere you want on the initiative order. But okay. I'm gonna put its name in in the initiative at that point. So that'll be the turn it always goes in, assuming it survives. That's fine. So can it? Can I hold its action? Uh, can I hold its turn until? I, uh, I assume that's what we were bringing on. Yes. End of Meeple's turn. Yes. Okay. Um, so your arrows went bloop, bloop, and went through this thing. Didn't do anything at all. Well, it's made of water, so it did make holes, but the holes filled in again. You you honestly don't know if you did damage to it or not. You disrupted it for a little while. Okay. But your your one tells you you don't know. <laughs> yeah, X knows nothing. You're attacking the darkness for all you know at this point. <laughs> um, it's a gazebo. You're fairly certain that it's not as powerful as a gazebo. Those things are murder. Um, but it's Fenix's turn. Fenix, what would you like to do? Make obsidian. Oh, wait, this is... <laughs> you have no lava. Of course I do. At this point, you have two different attacks you could do. You could attack with your sword, or you could use your breath weapon on it. Well, uh, wait, is there anyone in front of me? Uh, the way the party is spread out, even if there was someone in front of you, you could easily use your movement so they wouldn't be. Alright, I'm just going to move up and do your dragon breath. Okay, you do your dragon breath. Um, that's uh, 11 damage. Uh, I gotta make a save. Yeah, it makes a save. Deck save. And that's a 19, so whatever your number is, it made the save. So... Half. And that would be... 5.5. I can't hear what you said. It sounded like you said He's five saying and a five half. and a half. So okay, rounded. so it'd be five because it's rounded down. Okay. Next up is Meepo's turn. Okay. Um, I'm trying to understand what just happened. Did Fenix's attack do anything? Um, there was a sizzle. A sizzle. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I'm watching this go on. The arrows do nothing. Whatever Fenix did did nothing. So I'm gonna try to cast sleep on it, so it will go to sleep. it can go away. Okay. Oh. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> um, 
What do I roll? Sleep's a tricky one. You you don't need to roll anything. Uh, sleep oh, spell okay. is a saving throw by the creature in question. Usually is a wisdom save based so there, on. There is no, a that's roll. Different. That's completely oh, yeah, different. Yeah, it's changed. Yeah. Uh, now you, you roll to see how many hit points worth uh, of sleep you can throw at something. Okay, and I'm, I'm getting uh, it up. So it can actually affect multiple creatures if you roll high enough, and there's enough creatures that have very low hit points. Um, so you roll 5d8. The total is how many hit points of the creature uh, the spell can affect. If the creature has more hit points, more current hit points than what you roll, it, the spell does not work. Okay. But I'm also going to tell you right now the spell's not going to work. Okay, well... <laughs> She wouldn't know that, though. <laughs> you know? No, she wouldn't know that. I don't have the right dice to roll this one. It, it's, it, it's okay, because probably doesn't your spell matter. wouldn't work anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, well, she figured maybe it would work. <laughs> she don't know. Yep. And, and and more power to her. You have learned something this day. Mm-hmm. Yes. Water sleep does not work on water. Right. <laughs> Um, speaking of water elementals, it is going to attack. It rushes forward, and appendages come out of either side of this wave and swing. Um, one will one arm will go towards Vex. One will go towards Phoenix. Okay. And uh... ah, my browser just crashed. Well, in the meantime, it rolled a 14 for Vex. Uh, that is just barely a hit. Okay. And a 19 for Phoenix. Phoenix. Just barely a hit. <laughs> You're heading our ACs. Okay. Um, you both take 13 points of damage. Son of a oh! Come on, don't want you don't want two beeps in this. This is not a carrion crawler with, with a challenge rating of two. This is a water elemental with a challenge rating appropriate for your level. Yes, and we don't have a healer. We're gonna die. <laughs> you have a healer. You have two characters that are capable of casting healing spells. Accurate. Okay. A paladin and a ranger. On that note, Ari, you're up. All right. Uh, All right. So, water elemental or something there akin. So, let's see what happens if we try to freeze the water elemental. That might hurt. It may very well. So we are going to try a cantrip just to see how bad the water gets hurt by that. And that is a roll of 17 plus 7 is 24 AC. You almost hit it twice. Okay. And Oh, ghetto crit! 16 points of damage of cold. 16 points? 16 points. Now, it will also slow its speed by 10 feet with the Ray of Frost. Oh, it does more than that. Okay. Oh, can we go? go? Oh, you, yeah, that's right. You forgot your goat. I forgot about the um, goat. Yeah, you did forget about your goat. You were you were busy getting smacked a, a, upside the head with a big wave of water. Um, well, in fairness, the thing hurt. <laughs> did we establish if Meepo got off the goat or is still on the goat? You you never said you got off the goat. You were just uh, casting sleep. Well, how would she know that it was going to run in, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah, she wouldn't because Vex didn't tell Meepo, get off the goat, I'm going to have it right. charged. I, I did forget to scream, get off the goat. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, and and yeah, oddly enough, Meepo has many talents, but psychic abilities are not amongst them. Um, now, by the way, uh, this water elemental, as it takes this cold damage, um, parts of it actually become ice. Okay. Uh, mostly around so. the base. Um. The ice is cracking as it tries to move while frozen. Uh, it can move somewhat, but you have really slowed it down. Okay. It is not bloodied, however. 
Okay, we are back up to the top of the initiative. Vex, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I scream, Meepo, get off the goat. Okay, I jump off the goat and splash into well, the water. You, you, you'll be able to get off the goat at your turn. Oh, your, yeah. okay, then I don't do that yet. Yeah, you can actually, talking <sighs> is a free action. You can do that at any point, whether or not it's your turn, but anytime you're going to do any type of movement, unless okay. it's listed as a reaction, you have to do that oh, on your okay. turn. This is the first battle she's been in since I took over the character. Uh, this so. is this is going to be really risky because I'm this, but I need to. Because okay, and realizing that the arrows didn't seem to do anything, I'm going to drop my bow uh, and pull out the skim the plus one scimitar and my dagger and go for two attacks with a scimitar and then an offhand strike. Okay. Okay. Scimitar first. Uh, so that's a... Uh, 15? A 15 just barely hits. Just barely hits. Okay. So I need D I'm going to D6. Uh, so that is... 4... So it's eight points of, I think it's slashing damage with the scimitar. Yes. Be. Eight points of slashing damage for the first strike. Uh, second with the scimitar is... That's 18 to hit. 18 to hit. And that's six plus four. Ten points of slashing damage with the scimitar. And okay. I'm going with the offhand strike with the non plus non magic dagger. Uh, to 17 plus 6, so 23 to hit. 23 is a hit. And that's D4. Every time you give me a number that's higher than the previous number, I'm still going to say it's a hit. I know, it's a habit, and that's a max <laughs> damage on that dagger. That's, that's a fine. Four, 4 damage. Okay. Wait, uh, so you have Hunter's Mark on it? Oh, Hunter's Mark, yes! Uh, plus an R6. Six from what? Hunter's, Hunter's mark. mark. From which attack, though? The Hunter's Mark itself doesn't do damage. The Hunter, no, Hunter's Mark does do damage. When I when I attack, it, I, I add a D6 to all of my attacks with Hunter's Mark. Okay. So it was... So it was. I mean, don't get me wrong. Because it's a dagger, it'll be half because non magic weapon. But so yes, yeah. it's, it's ten reduced to five. But for the other ones, that was a magical weapon. Yes. Okay. So um, your scimitar does a fantastic job. And yes, in this podcast, we're saying both pronunciations for scimitar because why not? Um, we can. Um, as as you slice, th it goes through this thing like water. Um, How oh, apropos. Yes. But as it goes through the water elemental, you're also knocking out huge chunks that were frozen from Ari's attack. So its mass is significantly reduced. Matter of I fact... Could. Um, Tag team. Woo! You could even say that it's bloodied if it had blood. Which it does not. But let's pretend. Phoenix, you're up. Does it still have like ice uh, chunks in it? Oh yeah, um, significantly less. But there's still parts of it that are frozen. frozen. Um, as it's tried to move, the ice is broken in places and sort of flowed into the main body, so it's spread out. Um, but it it's not just a, a salt slurry anymore. Is there a way to like slam something? Uh, you could attempt it, but you've seen this thing have arrows pass right through it. No, I so, can't. So. I grab it by the ice. There's nothing to grab. Well, there, there's more. ice, but the way this thing moves, you are. I'm not even going to make you roll. You're fairly certain that anything you grab onto would be risking it just moving over you and trying to drown you. All right, I'll just tackle my sword. Okay, give me an attack roll. Uh, wow, I was 11 plus 9, 20. All right, awesome. 
So that would be 1d8 plus 8 damage. Seventeen damage. Um, it can't be seventeen. Oh no 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 no! Wrong point. Wrong point. Wrong point. Wrong point. Thirteen. Could be worse. You could have been rolling your attack rolls with a d12. Yeah. I've seen that happen. Okay, so your sword goes through it in epic fashion. Um, its mass diminishes as you do this, which is kind of weird because you didn't knock out huge chunks of ice or water. It just sort of like sank down fr um, as you hit it, like like you were chopping away its essence as opposed to its material. Um, but it is now Meepo's turn. Okay, Meepo's going to get off the goat, because Mr. Vex told her to. Splash, you're over your waist deep in water. I wonder if Meepo can swim. <laughs> Alright, um, do I... It, is my turn over, or do I do... No, um, that, that used up half of your movement. So okay. you could still move somewhere away from the goat if you wished to. Uh, and you still have an action, which could either be your movement again... Or it could be an attack. Okay. Um, can I use prestidigitation again to do something? Um, you could, but prestidigitation is uh, its a minor spell. It's a cantrip, so it doesn't even use mm -hmm. a spell slot. Um, you, you've used it for pranks and stuff and to clean things, but you don't think it would do anything to a creature of this size and power. Well, what, what she's thinking is um, <laughs> that you can use it to uh, chill water, like freeze it, and the water's maybe not so smart to know that it's not really being frozen, so maybe it would be upset. So you're going to try to aggro freeze. the water elemental? Well, she doesn't know it's going <laughs> to aggro, but she, she's seen, she saw Mr. Ari's freeze spell work, and she thinks maybe this might help. Okay. Okay, so um, for that... Um, this is an interesting situation because precipitation <laughs> is not normally an attack spell, but you're using it as an attack. So mm -hmm. I'm going to have and this. I... I'm sorry. And it's like an interesting way to do it. Yeah, I I love this game. <laughs> I love I, it. It's I so do. good. Yes, uh, and if we were min maxing here if we were trying to be the most effective this would not be the choice to make but this oh, leads Lord, to an no. interesting narrative and i like that more <laughs> good um logan's fixation on smashing wagons or fenix's fixation rather on smashing wagons doesn't help with min maxing the game and being the most effective but i love but it fun. as a character trait so i'm going to have um this creature do um, I'm going to say that would probably be a constitution save. That would be a 15. The question is, what is the number based on Meepo's stats? I have no idea. And I forget how to configure it. It is, where it eight. is. It is 8 plus proficiency bonus plus the appropriate statistical modifier. So in her case, as a sorcerer, it would be charisma. So it's her charisma modifier. We're fifth level, so our proficiency bonus is three. Uh, so we're gonna start with eight plus three is 11, plus whatever her charisma modifier is. Is uh, she she's, fifth she's level, level, level four. She's level four. Yeah, she, she's uh, one level below you. So she will have a eight two. plus two, so it's 10, plus ten her charisma, plus. which is 13. So no, that's it, a plus one. Okay, right. and, and I rolled a 15 for the water elemental. So you cast precipitation and you see like, well, as this water elemental is moving around, bits of droplets are flying off of it. And as you cast precipitation, those droplets turn into snowflakes. <laughs> and it is very pretty. You catch one on your tongue. Um, it's very salty. And it tastes flat. <laughs> um, it's like trying to catch something on your tongue, but you realize it's acid rain. You're like, oh, ugh. Never mind. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Industrial Era. 
Um, but there, there is no other effect from this. That's worth a try. <laughs> it was cool. At the end, yeah. It, it was. Does that cool. complete my turn? Uh, that does complete your turn. Okay. It is now the okay. water elemental's turn. And the goat wolf. I'm sorry. The goat. Oh, that's right. You wanted the goat to go after mm -hmm. Meepo, so I'm gonna have the goat going right. on initiative 17. Okay. So the goat's gonna do a charge. As I typed uh, the goat into my initiative order, my caps lock was apparently on, so now it's greatest greatest of all time. As opposed <laughs> to just goat. Oh, um, so the goat's gonna charge into a ram attack. Uh so yeah, see if it hits. It's hack roll. Uh <laughs> 15. 15 hits. So I get a D4 plus another D4 for, for the, the charge. For the record, its AC is oh, no. 14. An X. So uh, the target takes an extra two 1D4 bludge. Okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Six plus one. So that's seven points of bludgeoning damage. And it has to do a DC 10 strength saving throw. Or be knocked prone. It is immune to I being knocked I figured out. it would be, but I just wanted to check. And it takes three points of damage because that's half damage rounded down. Although, technically it's a magic goat. I summoned it. Not a magical goat. Oh, uh, magic God. summons the goat, but the goat itself acts like it's not magical. <sighs> Worth a try. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate the Rothfuss initiative. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I got to follow, I got to follow Rothfuss. So that's, that's, you got to do it. For those who are not in the know, <coughs> if you watch the Acquisitions Incorporated live shows that have Patrick Rothfuss playing Biari, he tends to do a very creative gameplay in regards Although to... Yes? I was going to say, technically for me, it would be Talison because I, I watch Critical Role more and that's what he does. <laughs> it, it, it works. It works. But in this case, the GOAT charges splash, splash 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 because it's charging through what would technically be difficult terrain um but it gets up some speed there's a flying leap goes boop, straight through the water elemental lands on the other side does a, a sort of tokyo drift style skid as it comes to a halt on the opposite side of the water elemental from the rest of you um and this this huge non-magical wave sort of like flies off in the goat's wake as it lands. And if it was an anime, it'd be really epic. There'd be lots of speed lines um, with probably a 30 second sequence showing this happening in more than one camera angle. But it still did three points of damage and the water elementals probably didn't even notice the attack. At that summit... It did something. That's it did do something. It. And now it's the water elemental's turn. And there are two individuals that are right next to it, both of which have caused it considerable harm. So it's going oh, to no. multi attack again with its slams. Okay, and that's that's a plus seven to hit. So you know, I'm using a dice app, and I've never seen a jacked die in a dice app before, but that is a jacked die. What? It, it, it This dice app that I'm using does 3D rendering for all the die, and use physics to say app. where they land. Yeah. Um, it's it's re really cool. They made it in Unity. Yeah. Um, this is a total digression here, but because it's using physics to decide how they land, it landed next to another dice... Or die, rather, and it was on a corner. So I, I re-rolled it, and that's for your advantage because all those numbers that were sticking up were very high. And that right there that I'm looking at is a 2 for uh, Vex. So plus two. 7 would be a 9. That's a mess. And for Phoenix, that would be a 10 with the modifier in place. Uh, that's a mess. 
Okay, so it tries to slam against you again, but unfortunately for it, you are too wily and are able to sidestep its blows. You do get soaked a bit because as it slams down into the brine, water splashes up, and it's like you were you were in the second seat on one of those log rides at an amusement park, and the person uh-huh. in front of you ducked, and you kind of weren't expecting to get it all in your face, but you got it all in your face. Okay, on that note, it is Ari's turn. All right. Well, Ray of Frost seems to have done wonders, so we're going to repeat that, hopefully with equal effect, although not likely given I got those two eights. All right. Uh, 14 plus 7 is 21. And the cold damage is a total of 8. Okay. Duly noted. This thing is looking less like an imposing water elemental and um, more like something you'd put in a snow globe, but it's still there. Damn. That's Vex. a good weapon. Okay. <clears throat> Same as before, because it actually worked. Uh, two blows with the scimitar, one with the offhand. Uh, so the first one is a 17 to hit. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's 2d6. Uh, so 2, 4, 8 points of slashing for the first. Second is a 18 to hit. And that's 10, 14 points of slashing. Okay, with that second strike with your scimitar, the last of the water elemental sort of just sizzles off of your blade and and disappears. Can I very quickly try and find my bow since I just dropped it in the water to um, pull my weapons out? Things are much more buoyant in salt water than they are in fresh water. Um, this is very similar to one of those places like the, the Dead Sea where, where tourists will go there and, and just float on the surface. Because it's okay. impossible to sink, so the bow's just sort of floating there. Okay, I grabbed the bow. Okay, the goat floats by you. He's a good Matt. boy. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. And I just kind of pick up Meepo and put her back on the goat. Thank you. From the goat's perspective, it laid the killing blow. <laughs> <laughs> it is an I animal. Mean, it went through this thing. Clearly that defeated it. What did I call it? Barnabas? Yes. It's a good little Barnabas. Now, you don't know what time of day it is because you're underground, but dawn hits immediately and it just disappears. No. Oh, oh no. I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm not doing that. I could have. I could have. Well, in fairness, if you did, I'd just pull out another one. Yeah, because you'd have all three tri- charges back. You could pull out three right away. Okay, so, uh, as you gather your senses, because this this was perhaps not the most enjoyable um, moment of your careers, um, you actually, for this particular location, you don't think you're going to rate it very high. Um, it, it, it's, it's not going to get any recommendations from you. You might post images from it, but they'll be very unflattering angles. Um... <laughs> Does anyone need healing? Yes. Other than myself, does anyone need healing? <laughs> uh, considering you and me took the same amount of damage, yes. Right, well, you can also heal yourself, so dump some lay on hands on yourself. And with saying that to him, I cast Cure Wounds on myself at second level. Crash lay on hands on me. And uh, that's the plus plus one wisdom modifier. So that's 10 hit points. Okay. I feel better now. <laughs> okay. And as you're doing this, you notice another one of those satchels or whatever it is. <sighs> The, 
whoever was attaching these wasn't making any effort to try to hide them. It's more like they were just trying to make sure they were above the water line. I feel like these there's so many of them, we could never use them. Perhaps, but I mean, what danger would it present to the cavern? Oh, a lot. A yeah. So much, but... I think we're safest ignoring them. By the way, that feeling that I told Dread. you about when you entered, that has not gone away. If anything, it has gotten stronger since you killed the water elemental. This is not a good cavern. No, oh, I, I hate this place. Let's see if we can leave here. Where can we exit? It? It's well, an awful lot of water. Not going to burn really. Easy. Although, never mind. <laughs> where where you are, um, you could continue to the north. This ca you were going west, but this cavern turned northwards as you were going through it. Um, to the south, there are some passages that you did not explore yet. Um, there, there's two to the south of you. Plus, there's the one that you passed on the way here. So three different ways you could go south, and looks like two different ways you could go north. So we got five exits total. Yes. It's possible that some of those exits join up again. Right. Um, you've seen several stalactites and stalagmite features in here where they've been here so long they joined together into a pillar instead. But right. that's what you're seeing. All right. So we got north or south. We can't go any further west. Uh, we, originally headed, we were originally headed south. Well, why don't we try that? We've got three southwest exits. Or three, okay. three south exits. So, uh, I guess take southeast. I mean, at least make sure if it leads back that way towards the, towards the uh, waterfall way. If it does, then we can come back and try the middle passage. Okay. And actually, what I'm going to suggest is that that's what we do next time because we've been playing for two hours now um, and while I still feel fresh enough that I could continue I know that I won't feel that way when I'm editing this probably true yeah